Good morning, grade 11 student. It's me again, Sir God. And for today's lesson, pag-uusapan natin yung mga types of qualitative research. Okay, so meron tayong six types ng qualitative research at pag-uusapan natin ngayon na. Simulan na natin. Ang first type ng ating qualitative research is yung tinatawag nating case study. So, ano ba itong case study? So, basahin natin. This type of qualitative research usually takes place in the field or social care, nursing, psychology, rehabilitation centers, education, and etc. Okay, so yung mga content na, yung mga subjects na involved dito, ito yung mga social care, nursing, psychology, issues sa mind, rehabilitation centers, education, and etc. This involve a long time study of a person. So, sabi ko, medyo matatagal, medyo matagal talaga tong ha, study, group, organization, or institution. No, kasi nga, pag-aaralan mo silang mabuti. Obserbahan mo silang mabuti. Kaya medyo matagal yung type ng qualitative na to, which is the case study. It seeks to answer to why such things occur to the subject. Inaaral mo yung, uh, yung usapin about bakit nangyari ito sa taong to. Bakit nagkaganito yung community na to? So, ano yung mga factors kung bakit sila nagkaganan? So, for seeking questions like that, medyo matatagalan talaga matapos yung ganitong type ng uh, research kasi everyone that is involved in the study should be should be asked finding reasons behind such occurrences derives you to delve into relationship of people related to the case under study so medyo ma-attach ka talaga sa mga tao may involve ka sa community nila minsan nga yung ibang mga researcher tumitira doon ng mga ilang araw para talaga ma-close nila yung, yung community kasi hindi naman sila kagad magbibigay sa inang information hanggat hindi sila napapalagay sa iyo hindi sila comfortable sa iyo so hindi sila magbibigay ng information kagad-agad. Yung iba is nag stay talaga doon for a couple of days. Varieties of data collection methods such as interviews, questionnaires, observation, documentary analysis are used in, the, in this type of qualitative research. So, mga interviews, gagawin mo yan. Questionnaires, observations. Uh, when you talk about documentary analysis, can be a uh, picture, notebook, na inaaral mo yung mga evidences na yon analyze mo kung anong behavior, culture ang meron sa community na yon Okay, so yung next natin is yung ethnography. Okay, it is falling in the field of anthropology. Ethnography is the study of particular cultural group to get a clear understanding of its organizational setup internal operation and lifestyle. Okay, so magiging parang isa ka talagang anthropologist dito. Professional anthropologist. They are experienced to live in a community or in a cultural uh, group of people na kailangan nilang aralin, kailangan nilang maintindihan yung organizational setup, internal operation, and lifestyle ng specific group of people. Like for example sa atin yung mga indigenous group of people like Bajau. So to know their lifestyle, to know their internal operations, paano sila nabubuhay, ano yung source of living nila, ano yung organizational setup nila, no? meron ba silang mga, mga bossing, sino ba yung mga bossing-bossing nila dyan, no? meron ba silang tinatawag na Harry or Reina, may paano yung organizational setup. So para malaman mo yun is you have to live with them. Kailangan mong ma-experience yung kanilang kultura, yung kanilang lifestyle, internal operations. So, you have to live with them. You have to experience the lifestyle that they have. So, that is ethnography. A particular group reveals the nature or characteristic of their own cultural through the world perception of cultural group's member. So, para mas lalo mong maintindihan kung ano yung kanilang perception about sa mundo, uh, mundo na ginagalawan nila or may idea ba sila na meron pang ibang community outside their community is by uh, talking to the members of the cultural group. So, kakausapin mo yung bawat isa, hindi naman lahat, kung sino man yung pwede mong makausap, na pwede mong ma-interview with regards to their 
uh, lifestyle, uh, tradition, and culture. By having conversation with them, nagkakaroon ka ng clear understanding about their cultural background and beliefs. So, ito yung tinatawag nating ethnography. So, next is the content and discourse analysis. Content analysis method requires an analysis or examination of substance or content through mode of communications. Sa content discourse analysis, uh, ang ginagawa rito is kailangan mo ng documentary evidences para makapagbigay ka ng iyong conclusion or generalization about dun sa content mo. Ano ba yung pwede nating pagkuhaan? Pwede tayong humingi sa kanila ng letters na magsasabi about sa kanilang tradition or kanilang mga paniniwala. Pwedeng letter, pwedeng books, pwedeng journals. No? Usually, makahanap ka naman ng mga libro or journals with regards to the particular group of people. For sure, meron na nag-research tungkol sa, tungkol sa kanila. So, maaari mo yung basahin para magkaroon ka ng idea. May, pwede rin mga video recordings kung meron, online messages, and etc. Through this language structure, the research will discover the effect of sociological, cultural, institutional, and ideological factor on the content mix in a discourse analysis. Now, by these modes of communication, nagagamit mo to for, for your analysis for your discourse analysis. In this type of research, you need a set of questions to guide you in your analysis. So, dapat kapag ganitong type ng qualitative research ka, content and discourse analysis, dapat ready na yung mga set of questions mo para maka-derive ka, para guided ka dun sa gusto mong mangyari sa content mo. Ano ba talaga yung gusto mong malaman dito sa subject mo, sa content mo. So, dapat meron kang set of questions. So, ito yung tinatawag natin content and discourse analysis. Okay, so another one is historical analysis. Okay, central of this qualitative research method is the examine of primary documents to make you understand the connection of the past events to the present time. So, yung mga researcher natin, mahilig sila sa mga, mga artifacts, mga antiques, mga tools, mga gamit ng mga indigenous group of people na makakapagkwento ng mga nakaraan or ng, ng history by looking on that particular artifacts, tools, mga gamit nila before. Makakapagbigay ka ng idea, na interpretation mo na ah, ang tagal na pala nilang namumuhay dito sa community na to. Ito pala yung mga kagamitan nila before, yung hindi pa modern yung uh, technology ito pala yung ginagamit nila. Nakakatulong yon para makapagbigay ng uh, idea sa researcher kung ano yung community na yan before yung present na condition nila. So, this is historical analysis. Okay, so yung susunod is tinatawag nating phenomenology. Phenomenology, okay? So, it refers to the study of how people find their experience meaningful. So, yun yung phenomenon. We have our own different understanding on how things work for each one of us. Meron tayong kanya-kanyang definition sa bawat bagay based on our experience. So that is phenomenon. Magkakaiba yun eh. No? Kasi maybe my experience is different from your experience. Its primary goal is to make people understand their experience about death. Example, death of their loved ones, care of handicap, friendliness of people, etc. So dito, uh, very specific yung mga questions na ibibigay mo sa subject o sa content na gusto mong makuha. Example, ang gusto mong maintindihan is what is the perception of the person when it comes to uh, death of their loved ones. So, kapag kinausap mo ako about it, I have my personal understanding about it. Siguro sa akin, hindi masyadong magiging madrama yung sagot ko. Pero, kung kakausapin mo yung iba't ibang tao about this particular matter, I believe magkakaiba si magkakaiba ng uh, ng perception ng understanding about it. Siguro yung iba sobrang emotional, yung iba naman uh, wala lang come and go, no? So that is uh, phenomenology. 
yung mga tao na pumapasok sa ganitong type of qualitative research, dapat medyo they build already their perception. They build already their character. Kasi maaaring masama ka o madala ka sa mga emosyon na maririnig mo. Maapektuhan ka sa mga bagay na mamuwi-witness mo dahil sa study. Those engaged in assisting people to manage their own lives properly often do this type of qualitative research. Ibig sabihin, kaya mong i-manage yung sarili mo. Kaya mong dalhin in every emotions, in every situations na meron ka. Na hindi ka basta-basta madadala. Kaya mong i-manage yung, yung uh, buhay properly. Emotions properly. So this is what we call phenomenology. Okay, so dito na tayo sa uh, advantages of qualitative research. So unang advantage nito, it adapts a naturalistic approach to its subject matter. Yes, natural naturalistic because natural yung paggather mo ng data. You go to the place, interview, observe the people, observe their culture. Kaya very natural yung pagkuha mo ng data. Number two, it promotes a full understanding of human behavior in natural setting. Yes, totoo din naman. Uh, naiintindihan mo yung uh, total condition ng isang community when you do a qualitative research because you have your personal encounter with the members of the community. Number three, it is instrumental for a positive societal change. Yes, kasi pag, may, pag ang, ang research mo is qualitative research, makikita mo yung, ano, yung weaknesses ng community or yung pangangailangan ng isang grupo, ng tao. Doon sa yung recommendation sa research mo, masasabi mo na ito dapat po yung binibigyan natin ng pansin sa grupo na to kasi dito, ito yung kulang nila, etc. Et so, nagkakaroon ng uh, nagiging instrumental yung qualitative research into a positive change ng society. Kasi nas, mas nai-improve sila. Okay? It is a way of understanding and interpreting social interactions. Yes, uh, akala natin uh, pare-parehas lang ng way of interaction ng bawat tao. Pero by by get in in, the per, in a different society, culture, nakikita mo na magkakaiba pala ng traditions and culture ang bawat uh, group of people. So, naiintindihan mo yung kanilang mga beliefs, paniniwala, tradition in that way nirerespeto mo sila kasi yun yung kanilang paniniwala no so nag nagbabago din sa yo personally nagbabago din yung per social interaction mo with regards to different types of people kasi nagiging sensitive ka na dahil naka-encounter ka ng iba't ibang ugali iba't ibang kultura okay so number five, it offers multiple ways of acquiring and examining knowledge about something Yes, kasi maraming paraan pala kung paano makakuha ng information and data using this qualitative research. Sobrang lawak ng pwedeng mong gawin para makakuha ka ng mga information gamit itong kind of research na to, which is qualitative research. And the last is the disadvantages of qualitative research. Number one, it involves a lot of researchers' subjectivity in data analysis. Yes, kasi, kasi yung magi interpret ng kalagayan ng isang community. So, dapat careful si researcher sa pag, pag interpret. So, medyo parang uh, research, researcher centered itong qualitative research. Kasi, siya lang yung nagi interpret lahat. Based on the, siyempre, based on the facts na na-observe niya at mga sinabi sa kanya ng tao dun sa community. Kaya mapapansin nyo, dun sa, pag, dun sa mga report nila, Jessica Soho, di ba? Laging sinasabi, di umano. Kasi, ayaw nilang ilagay yung sarili nila dun sa interpretation. Ang ginagawa nila is di umano. Ibig sabihin, hindi sa kanila galing yung information na binabanggit nila. Nakuha lang nila dun sa isang community o dun sa isang tao. So, ganun siya. Careful tayo when it comes to delivering our uh, conclusion and generalization. Pero, syempre, kung mapapansin nyo, at the end of the video, nagbibigay pa rin sila ng sarili nilang opinion with regards to a particular phenomenon na kanilang na-witness. Next is, it is hard to know the validity or reliability of the data. 
Yes, totoo rin. Kasi baka mamaya, yung mga sinasabi nila is kwentong barbero lang, kwentong kutsero lang. Kaya mahirap din talagang i-validate yung reliability ng data kung totoo o hindi. Kasi puro interview, kwento, ganon. Next, it is open-ended question, yield yield data overload that requires long time analysis. Yes, it's open it is open-ended kasi nga hindi natatapos yung usapin. Marami pa ring magdadagdag at magdadagdag ng information. Kung gusto mo talaga makakuha ng concrete analysis or generalization, maybe you can stay longer in a particular community. At so yurin mo lahat ng pwede mong makita dun sa komunidad. Next is it's time consuming. Totoo naman. Kasi nga, medyo matagal itong qualitative research at kailangan ng mas mahabang panahon. And the last is, it involves several processes which result greatly depend on the researcher's view on interpretation. Sobrang dami ng processes nito. Una pa lang doon sa pag, uh, pagpili ng research na gusto mo, uh, set of questions na ibibigay mo factors and variables na kailangan mo lang dun sa research. So, sobrang dami ng process bago ka makapag-come up sa yung interpretation and conclusion. So, marami kang kailangan i-consider. So, these are the advantages of having a qualitative research. Okay, so yun. Tapos na yung ating uh, study with regards to types of qualitative research and, and advantages and disadvantages of qualitative research. Okay, so before this video end, I want you to comment your learnings with regards to this video. Maglalagay ako ng questions after nito. Maglalagay ako ng questions sa dulong slide para malaman ko kung ano yung mga naintindihan mo dito sa video na to. Okay, so hanggang dito na lang. Uh, have a nice day. God bless. Stay home. Stay safe. Ingat tayong lahat.